Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to another kit building tutorial. A while back I did a video on how to put together the classic Dapl mineral wagon kit, and a lot of you seem to enjoy that video. So I thought I'd do another one, and this time it's with their meat wagon kit instead. This is what we'll be building today. This is the unopened kit from Dapl on the right, and then on the left is hopefully what we'll end up with. Now just like the mineral wagons, these kits are fairly old now, but they're also quite cheap, usually around 5 to 10 pounds, and they also come with transfers and metal wheels included. They're pretty simple to build too, so they're a great starting point if you've never built a kit before and want to give it a go. So here's the floor that'll make up the majority of the chassis, and the first thing to do is to add the brake rigging. With it cut from the sprue you can see there's a notch on the underframe where the brake piece slots in. I add a bit of glue to the notch itself and then press the brakes down into position. And then make sure that you repeat this for the other side. By the way the glue I'm using is nothing fancy, it's just Revel plastic glue but the fine tip is very handy for getting that glue exactly where you want it to go. Next the side frames need to be glued into position, and these kind of slot over the frame. They don't quite click into position, but you can feel when they're in the right place. Now some people prefer to add the wheels at this point before gluing the rest of the frame together, but personally I don't do that. I actually find it much easier to build and paint the rest of the kit without the wheels in place, and you'll see later on it's not too difficult to get them in once it's complete. And now the buffer beams need to be glued to either end of the chassis too. Again these kind of click into place and you'll notice as well that there's a bit of a lip here along the edge which is intentional and you'll see why we need that a bit later on. And of course again don't forget to do the other side too. With both buffer beams in place next let's cut the buffers themselves off the sprue. Be careful here because they can ping off quite quickly like that one just did and you'll have a real job finding them again. After searching through the carpet for a couple of hours I did actually manage to find that one rogue buffer so now we can fit these to the buffer beam. You'll notice that it has holes ready for the buffers and they're a nice push fit. Then I like to add a bit of glue to the back of this just to make sure it's secured in position. At this point you can also add the coupling hooks. These actually come with a chain moulded on underneath them but personally I always tend to remove this because I don't think it looks that good. The hooks are a bit more fiddly to attach but again these just push into the holes in the middle of the buffer beam and can be cemented in place with a bit more glue. At this point I like to give everything we've assembled so far a coat of black paint. It's much easier to do this now before we start adding the rest of the body, otherwise you can find the colour spilling over into areas you weren't intending to paint. One other detail which I nearly forgot to add is this air tank. It's a bit hard to see now but there is a small slot that this fits over on the underframe. It's not too difficult to get it in place but it probably would have been easier to do this right at the start when we first put the brake rigging in place. And while we have the paint out, we may as well do the sides of the body too. I'm using Humbrol enamel brown paint here, and just to make things easier I'm painting this while it's still on the sprue.
and then using a sort of grey colour from Humbrol, I'll also paint the roof as well. Going back to black, I also paint the brake levers too. And then because these are quite small, delicate parts, again, I do this while they're still attached to the sprue. Once the paint has dried, they can be cut away and then attached to the chassis. There are actually holes on the sides and the underframe that these are supposed to fit into, but unlike the buffers, they're not very easy to get into position. However, with a bit of glue on the ends of the lugs, you can get them roughly in the right position, and once it dries, it all looks fine. There is one final detail to add to the buffer beam, and that is these pipes, which again, I painted black while they were on the sprue. Then there's one more hole on the buffer beam that this fits into with the pipe hanging down below the underframe. Now annoyingly these do cause some problems with the tension lock couplings supplied with the kit so you may want to leave these off. That said I have found a potential solution which I'll show you at the end of the video when I add the couplings. Now that the brown paint on the body has dried, we can cut these off the sprue and start assembling them. The first thing to do is glue the doors in place. Now, the DAPL instructions say that these hinges are supposed to click together much like the doors on the mineral wagons. However, I've never had any success with this, and I've always ended up breaking the tiny hinges, and so personally I forget about having opening doors and just glue these into position. So naturally you want to make sure that you glue the left hand door to the left hand piece and the right hand door to the right hand side piece. And then of course you'll need to repeat all this for the other side as well. And while that's all drying let's get the ends of the van into position and this is where that little lip on the buffer beam comes into play. First we run a bit of glue along here and then when you push the end piece into position it should sit nicely on top of it. This will give us the correct height for the roof later on and just makes it a bit easier to glue in place. And then once again we repeat this for the other end. And don't forget as you're doing this as well to make sure it's standing up at a right angle. A cutting mat with a grid on it like I'm using here is really useful in this instance. Now let's get the sides in place. I run a bit of glue up the side edge and then also along the floor of the van as well. When you push it into place, again make sure everything is straight and aligned properly, otherwise you'll have problems fitting the rest of the van together later on. And now we'll fit the rest of the side in place by doing exactly the same thing, except this time you want to make sure that the two door pieces line up. I would recommend doing the left side first followed by the right here like I've shown as it's much easier to align them if you do it this way around. And that's just because of the extra catch detail on the right side. And so with one side complete we'll now repeat all that again on the other side. Now it's onto the transfers, and as I mentioned at the start, like the Mineral Wagon Kit, this does come with a set of transfers. Unlike the Mineral Wagon Kit though, you do get a variety of different numbers to use, which is fantastic, so if you decide to build more than one of these kits, they don't all have to be the same number. So first cut out the number that you want to use, and then dip it into some water. It might actually be a good idea to have some tweezers for this. When the transfer is fully soaked through, you'll be able to move it off the backing paper and into position on the bottom left of the van. 
Normally I like to use a cocktail stick to move the transfer around, but in this instance I was just using what I had to hand, which happened to be this small screwdriver. When you're happy with the position, just dab away the excess water with a bit of tissue and the transfer will be secured in place. And now we'll follow the same process with the rest of the transfers. And it's a bit of a theme throughout this video, but once you've completed it on one side, don't forget to do the other side as well. With all the transfers now in place, our van kit is almost complete. And now we can add the wheels. I just push the axle in on one side and then pull the axle box on the other side out a bit until the wheels fall into place. And once you've repeated this for the other wheel set, you just want to make sure that it's running nice and freely. We just need to add the couplings and we'll start off with these two pieces that hold the coupling. As you can see they just clip together and then on top there's a lug that fits into the coupling mount on the underside of the wagon. You could glue these into place if you want, but I've always found them a really good fit and I've never had one pop off unexpectedly. Now, as I mentioned before, this brake pipe does get in the way of the coupling supplied in the kit. As you can see, the wider tension lock doesn't fit when the pipe is in place, which is a bit of a shame. Now, you might be thinking that this is a design flaw, but actually I think these kits are so old now that they were designed before the tension lock couplings were widely used. Luckily though, there is a solution as you can get slimmer couplings that do fit. You just need to make sure that these have the right dovetail on the end so that they fit into the dapple coupling mount. It's a bit of a workaround and it does cost a bit extra, but honestly I would recommend using these couplings anyway as they're much better than the ones supplied in the kit. In fact, I did the same with all my mineral wagon kits and it's just made them run so much better. Finally, it's time to add the roof, and there's one extra bit of painting to do on these little supports underneath. These sit above the door when the roof is in place, and it's best to paint them brown just to help them blend in a bit better. And then just before we clip the roof in place, I'll add some lead weight inside. Since the kit is entirely plastic, a bit of weight just helps to make it run a bit better, and brings the centre of gravity down too. I'll then just push the roof on top, and the whole thing should just clip in place. You can glue it down if you want to, but if you ever want to adjust the weight by adding more or taking some out, you can have it be removable like this and I've found that it looks perfectly fine just clipped on. With that, the kit is complete and here we can see the finished van. Now, they're not the most highly detailed piece of rolling stock in the world, but considering their age, I do think these are still very good kits, especially if you're a beginner and you want to get started with something simple. Here you can see the van does tend to run really nicely, although do bear in mind that that will depend on how well you put the kit together. I would definitely recommend you upgrade to the more modern couplings though, as not only do they fit better, but they also tend to stop the van from derailing as much. So that is the entire process and hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Do let me know down in the comments if there are any other Dapple kits you'd like me to do a tutorial on and if you haven't already please do subscribe and hit that bell icon too. In the meantime thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!